Welcome back my friends. So the last video was super nerdy. So this one, we might tone it down a bit <laughs> and we'll do one of those more philosophical style videos where I just rant and uh, give you guys some of my opinions. But before we get into it, you should come download the free Cal VPN Alpha. It's a new post quantum VPN, which can protect you from quantum computers. As per usual, thanks again for everyone who has been playing with it. Um, each video, more and more people sign up. And you know, I'm not sure if I'm just convincing some of you guys who watch or they're just new people, but thank you. It means a lot and I hope you're enjoying it. Make sure you leave some feedback. I do read all the feedback. So just because I haven't responded, you know, don't think I haven't seen your comment. I have, uh, and I really enjoy reading them. So I also just want to quickly say, I'm going to put some of the more offensive opinions at the end of the video. So, you know, if you don't want to be offended, maybe don't stick around. <laughs> Uh, because yeah, we'll, we're definitely going to talk about religion for sure. Optimistic nihilism. Before we watch, make sure you subscribe. You got to hit the bell notification, like hit the subscribe button again if you want to get notified when the videos come out. Otherwise, you don't see the videos unless they do well because they won't get recommended to you. It's very annoying how it all works. But anyway. Human existence is scary and confusing. A few hundred thousand years ago, we became conscious and found ourselves in a strange place. It was filled with other beings. We could eat some, some could eat us. There was liquid stuff we could drink, things we could use to make more things. The daytime sky had a tiny yellow ball that warmed our skin. The night sky was filled with beautiful lights. This place was obviously made for us. Something was watching over us. We were home. This made everything much less scary and confusing. But the older we got, the more we learned about the world and ourselves. We learn that the twinkling lights are not shining beautifully for us, they just are. We learn that we're not at the center of what we now call the universe, and that it is much, much older than we thought. We learn that we're made of many little dead things, which make up bigger things that are not dead for some reason, and that we're just another temporary stage in a history going back over a billion years. We learned, in all, that we live on a moist speck of dust moving around a medium-sized star in a quiet region of one arm of an average galaxy, which is part of a galaxy group that we will never leave. And this group is only one of thousands that together... We could... That's a bit... I thought this is optimistic nihilism, not pessimistic nihilism. Or is that just nihilism? ...that together make up a galaxy supercluster. But even our supercluster is only one in thousands that make up what we call the observable universe. The universe might be a million times bigger, but we will never know. We could throw words around like 200 billion galaxies or trillions of stars or bazillions of planets, but all of these numbers mean nothing. Our brains can't comprehend these concepts. The universe is too big. There is too much of it. But size is not the most troubling concept we have to deal with. It's time, or more precisely, the time we have. If you're lucky enough to live to one while time and space are interwoven into some what of the same thing so 100 you have 5200 weeks at your disposal if you're 25 now then you have 3900 weeks left if you're going to die at 70 then there are 2340 weeks left a lot of time but also not really yeah this just brings to mind like i think you're you're doing things right i think you're doing life right if you know at any point you know, if tomorrow you were to find out you're going to die very soon and you are okay with that, you know, I think you're doing life right. And if you're not okay with it, I think you should start to prepare. <laughs> Why? Because you're going to die soon. You know, it's actually inevitable. One day you will die uh, and it could be sooner rather than later. And, you know, if that idea right now scares you, I think, you know, you should start preparing. And some people might push back on this and be like, that's not a good idea. Why worry now? Well, because death can strike at any time within family or friends. Uh, and, you know, the, the more prepared you are, the, the more okay you're going to be. And I think there is ways to prepare for these things. How? Philosophy. Things like this. Uh, it really will help you. So if, I don't know, I'm not sure what you guys, you know, what your philosophies are. I imagine they're quite similar to mine, um, so I, I, I might be preaching to the choir here, but if you're, if you're not so much like a, if, if you don't think you're much of a thinker, I highly encourage you to try and become more of a thinker because it'll help you deal with really bad things in the world, you know, suffering to death and all kinds of, all of that sort of stuff. 
I think is easier to deal with when you have big philosophies. When I say big, I just mean, you know, you know, it incorporates a lot of the stuff we figured out. And then what? Your biological processes will break down and the dynamic pattern that is you will stop being dynamic. It will dissolve until there is no you left. Some believe that there is a part of us we can't see or measure, but we have no way to find out. So this life might be it and we might end up dead forever. This is less scary than it sounds though. If you don't remember the 13.75 billion years that went by before you existed, then the trillions and trillions and trillions of years that come after will pass in no time once you're gone. Close your eyes. Count to one. That's how long forever feels. And as far as we know, in the end, the universe itself will die and nothing will ever change again. Our videos induce existential dread in many people and the last few minutes probably haven't helped. So, for once, we want to offer a different way of looking at these things. An unscientific, subjective point of view. The philosophy of Kurzgesagt, if you want. Please take it with a grain of salt. We don't know any more about human existence than you do. We I love the whole setup of this. This is brilliant. This is how I try to do it. This is what I imagine I'm doing when I try to present, you know, those that wording to you. I think you it's beautifully counter existential dread with optimistic nihilism. What do we mean by that? We say down here. Well, to summarize, it seems very unlikely that 200 trillion trillion stars have been made for us. In a way, it feels like the cruelest joke in existence has been played on us. We became self-aware only to realize this story is not about us. While it is great to know about electrons and the powerhouse of the cell, science doesn't do a lot to make this less depressing. I like how that was in like a red pill, you know, like the matrix, the red pill. It's cool. Okay, but so what? You only get one shot at life, which is scary, but it also sets you free. If the universe ends in heat death, every humiliation you suffer in your life will be forgotten. Every mistake you made will not matter in the end. Every bad thing you did will be voided. If our life is all we get to experience, then it's the only thing that matters. I think people, are, if you've never come across, you know, these sorts of feelings of existential dread, you're probably th feeling right now, well, if nothing matters, like, well, why? Why should I care about anything? But obviously the key If the universe has no principles, the only principles relevant are the ones we decide on. If the universe has no purpose, then we get to dictate what its purpose is. Humans will most certainly cease to exist at some point. But before we do, we get to explore ourselves and the world around us. We get to experience feelings. We get to experience food, books, sunrises, and being with each other. The fact that we're even able to think about these things is already kind of incredible. It's kind easy to think of ourselves as separated crazy. from everything, but this is not true. We are as much the universe as a neutron star, or a black hole, or a nebula. Even better actually, we are its thinking and feeling part, the sensory organs of the universe. I think that's a little bit arrogant to think that, you know, because uh, who are we to really know if we are the thinking parts of the universe? Do you know what I mean? Like you see that quote a lot and it's like, you know, we are a way for the universe to, you know, think about itself. You know, we are atoms uh, thinking about our own atom, whatever. But I'm not sure that is actually a good way of looking at it. We are truly free in a universe sized playground. So we might as well aim to be happy and to build some kind of utopia in the stars. It's not as if we found out everything there is to know. We don't know why the rules of the universe are as they are, how life came into existence, what life is. We have no idea what consciousness is or if we are alone in the universe, but we can try to find some answers. There are billions of stars to visit, diseases to cure, people to help, happy feelings to be experienced and video games to finish. There is so much to do. So wrapping up, you've probably used up a good chunk of the time available to you. If this is our one shot at life, there is no reason not to have fun and live as happily as possible. Bonus points if you make the life of other people better. More bonus points if you help build a galactic human empire. Do the things that make you feel good. You get to decide whatever this means for you. We really have no idea what's going on. And yeah, why not be optimistic?
But I can't blame anyone for being pessimistic. You know, it's pretty, pretty nuts what's going on. One of my favorite quotes by Stephen Hawking, which is life would be tragic if it weren't funny. And then that other famous quote, what is it? Life uh, is a shipwreck, but you must not forget to sing in the lifeboats. I think it's something like that. So that's a great one as well. Yeah, always look on the bright side of life. And if you need some cheering up, go watch that Monty Python video. Always look on the bright side of life. It, it always cheers me up. And you know what, actually, I think that song, Always Look on the Bright Side of Life by Monty Python, perfectly encapsulates this philosophy. <laughs> uh, so the, if you've never seen the movie that this song is from, it's, it's a good watch. Uh, and if you just look this up on YouTube, it's hilarious. They're basically getting like crucified, uh, singing Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. And you know, it's, it's brilliant. Uh, and the lyrics of that song. Yeah, I used to put this song on whenever I felt shitty when I was a young boy. I, you know, I grew up with a single mom in poverty. Things were not good. So, you know, I used to feel kind of shitty all the time. And I would put this song on, always made me feel better. You know, it'd be pretty shitty to get to the end of life and, you know, find out there is a God and he's pretty unhappy with you for not just, you know, enjoying experience and trying to figure out how everything works all the time. <laughs> but I'm sure that's not the case, right? I'm sure whatever's going on is really, really, really crazy. And uh, I, I don't want to say like impossible to understand because I don't even know what... It's just amazing that when you go into the deepest areas of what we currently know, it will lead you to something that doesn't make sense. Isn't it amazing that we can use this thing called science that seems to be logical and make sense to ultimately arrive at the conclusion that nothing makes sense. And this is probably where a lot of people, you know, who, who love science, uh, jump off the train of what I'm talking about. They're like, no, you know, I don't buy any of that stuff. But, you know, like what I'm getting at is like that question I've posed to you guys before. Is there a God or is there, is there no God? Both answers are equally like stupefying. They don't make sense. <laughs> so it's impossible to understand what is going on. And if you really think about it, like you're here right now watching this video. And where did you come from? Like your parents. Yeah. And you go all the way back to what we currently understand is the Big Bang. So like, where did this thing come from? Like, what is going on? Like, why are we here right now experiencing? I daily, you know, ponder how strange this place is. I don't know how many times, you know, I'm not sure if it's healthy or not. I imagine, I, logically, it seems to be healthy. It, I mean, logically, I think it's healthy because it makes me appreciate things more. So to add on to what he's saying, I think a way you can appreciate experience more uh, life more, just things, is by being aware. Awareness of how bizarre whatever this is. A being aware that we don't know. Um, and I think if you can do that, you can appreciate everything in life far more. And I will also add to this, you know, you don't have to look into things more deeply, of course. You get to decide whatever you want to do. I would, you know, recommend you do because it only adds, like Feynman says, you know, learning about what makes a flower beautiful or sunlight or a sunrise and sunset doesn't take away. A lot, as a lot, a lot of people think it, take, it subtracts from the beauty, but I think it only adds. Uh, particularly when, you know, when you realize what's really going on is actually far more mysterious. You know, you can look at a beautiful sunrise and think, ah, oh, beautiful beauty and experience that human emotion wherever it's come from. Or you can, uh, you know, look at that sunrise and think, wow, you can think, you can ponder about light as well, which is one of the most mysterious things there is. And, you know, it doesn't experience time or distance. And yet you're watching these rays from the sun, like beam over the horizon. And if you ponder what that is, what, what, what's going on, it's like, wow, this, this is so incredible. It's like, everything is like magic. Whereas if you're not understood, if you're not looking deeper into things, you're probably just looking at a sunrise and thinking, ah, oh, that's beautiful. I wouldn't be surprised if there is a massive correlation. And there's probably studies done on this, you know, with the amount of existentialism, uh, that you, you get on like a daily basis. Uh, and if that correlated with some kind of intelligence or creativity, 
I just wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Uh, maybe people who get, you know, who feel, who have these existential, you know, problems constantly, maybe they do just have more consciousness. Um, that also wouldn't surprise me. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of people who aren't able to look, aren't able to use their sentience to look outside their animalistic nature. Because, you know, a lot of people don't like me even saying we're animals, but we're, we are animals, right? And we have these animalistic instincts and there's no difference from us to other animals in how we've evolved. And, you know, we have so many animalistic traits, obviously, because we're animals. <laughs> and so often humans just seem to completely succumb to their animalistic nature. And, you know, you look around in media and it's just people playing out their animalistic nature. It's like no one's utilizing their sentience. No one's utilizing this big thing in their head where they can go, okay, I don't have to do to follow my animalistic nature, which is trying to do all these things, right? You don't have to follow any of that because you've got this thing in your head where you can actually override. Your sentience can override emotion. It can override everything that you think. I just think that's truly incredible. I wonder if that's you know, unique to us, to humans, it might be. But uh, I also wonder if it's only unique to a subset of humans, because it really does seem like there's lots of humans on the planet who don't have this ability. Again, you look at media, you look at, you know, what's going on with the Kim, the Kardashians, uh, and it's just animalistic stuff. It's, and around the world as well with sport, there's so much tribalism, you know, people just, follow their animalistic nature. And I don't really understand why people don't override more, you know? And this also leads people into thinking, you know, your intuition knows all, and people just blindly follow their intuition. But what is intuition? You know, you can be off with the fairies and think it's something deep, you know, and your consciousness comes from some spiritual, whatever, blah, blah. Or you can look at it through the lens of science and intuition is likely just, uh, you know, some evolved uh, mechanism, you know, that is very useful and has been very useful, maybe not so useful anymore, and may maybe not very useful uh, for sentience, you know, maybe not very useful if you want to use your sentience to override everything else. Uh, I think intuition is actually, it, it makes it hard <laughs> because intuition is always going to follow those animalistic instincts, not this higher level of consciousness. And who knows, maybe what life is all about uh, in this universe is to find those special few who, you know, can really grasp the sentience they have in their brain and use it to override base, you know, nature or base primal animalistic instincts and intuition wouldn't surprise me you know it, obviously as we've talked about a lot there's going to be something really wacky going on probably uh abs like crazy wacky for sure anyway that'll do for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed uh gave some more opinions hope you're not too offended let me know what you think of it all down under and make sure you go download the kel vpn alpha and i'll catch you in the next one